Hey, it's Cara Riley, and welcome to the Landscape Photography Show, where we're helping share some tips and tools and different ideas on how to make your destination photography shoot at its best. We've got people from all over the world here and we're going to start out by sharing who we are and what we do. I'm one of the landscape photography page theme curators that Margaret Tompkins started and I also help people connect the dots in the cosmic cow pie of life as a small business consultant and real estate consultant. And having fun being an amateur photographer you can find some of my work on 500 px now we're gonna go to Margaret and she's gonna tell you about her work hi everyone um, good to be with you this evening I'm Margaret Tompkins uh, from Kansas City Missouri a happily retired uh, amateur photographer who likes to hang out occasionally on Google Plus and uh, I'm a curator there with the landscape photography photo theme and also help out as a moderator with the landscape photography community so uh, I'm into landscapes obviously and uh, the idea of destination photography uh, is just amazing to me you can combine uh, photography with a wonderful vacation and and have a great time so I'm really looking forward to uh, tonight's show that I'm going to talk about destination photography in Antelope Canyon which is what my uh, profile picture shows but the fact is I've got some kind of video issue but uh, so you won't see me tonight you'll see my my profile pic but uh, I'm an amateur photographer um, I love landscapes I do both color and black and white based in Phoenix Arizona um, I've been on Google Plus for about six months and uh, I'm a curator in the landscape photography theme and also a moderator with the landscape photography community. Um, you can find me on Google Plus at Jim Warthman and my website is warthmanphotography.com. <laughs> I was just about ready to tell everybody about cyber gremlins and how they come and what they do. <laughs> and one of them got me. And so if you see us disappear, we will come back. <laughs> we just had a little alien abduction. So now we're going to go across the ocean here to introduce David and from the Dublin area. Share, share with us, David, what, what you do and how people can find you. Hi folks, uh, my name is David Williams. I'm originally from uh, North Wales in the UK. Uh, I've been living in Ireland for the last 17 years, uh, 18 years this year. And uh, you can find me here on Google Plus uh, under David Heath Williams, um, mainly a landscape photographer. I do take various things, but it, it's mainly landscape photography. Um, thanks to Margaret there. She brought me on board um, about six months ago with landscape photography, and I enjoy every minute of the curating. Um, tonight's destination photography thing for me will just be uh, quite local in a way, but uh, it's uh, the Dingle Peninsula in County Kerry. Um, I haven't been down there for a year, but um, I have some uh, slides from my last trip down there in uh, February, this year, uh, February last year. Well... <clears throat> This, this is going to be so much fun because each of the photographers are going to be sharing something they have a passion about and how they got to, together to be able to bring it to the group and learn. So Margaret, we're going to start with you in uh, the uh, actual photography workshop. So share with us how, how you can join up and, and really have some fun with some other photographers. 
Thanks, Cara. Um, as uh, photographers, uh, when we're always wanting to learn new things and go to exciting, uh, wonderful destinations, and uh, sort of combine both of those together um, in a photography workshop. And I find it amazing that there are thousands upon thousands of options that you have available uh, for uh, the type of photography workshop that you would like. Some emphasize landscape, some emphasize wildlife and nature. Uh, some go to third world countries and um, are very adventurous. So you have a lot of options uh, when it comes to uh, destination workshops that involve photography. And I'm going to show you a few um, photos here real quick, ones that I have taken. I've done a number of these uh, workshops. Uh, I hate to head out just by myself, so I try to hook up with a workshop. And uh, then I'll give you some hints of some things that perhaps you can uh, think about when you're selecting which type of one that you want to do. Let's see, do we see the Grand Canyon? Not yet. <laughs> Whoops. I must not have pushed. The we'll try that again. There, we see the Grand Canyon, Margaret. Very Thank good. Thank you. Okay, I'll just run through a few of these. Uh, this is one that uh, I participated in with the Friends of Arizona Highways uh, Photography Workshops, and I'll tell you a little bit more about them uh, in a few minutes here. Uh, but these are just some that were shot there up at the Grand Canyon. Now, this, all of these photos that you're seeing uh, are ones that I have put in my stream recently. And uh, this is the uh, east rim of the canyon uh, at Watchtower, where it sort of flattens out and goes off into the desert there in the upper right, where you can see the water from the Colorado River. And here is uh, Monument Valley. Um, we were able to uh, be there at a time after uh, and sort of during some rain. And uh, the rain does a couple of great things. It kind of settles the dust down, and it also really brings out these vivid, rich colors that uh, you can find in the Southwest. Uh, here's a rather famous place called John Ford Point, named after the uh, movie director John uh, uh, John Ford, who uh, filmed many of his westerns here. And um, you see a cowboy there uh, who's sitting tall in the saddle, kind of like a John Wayne character. That's actually a paid model um, who is out there in his red shirt uh, looking perfect, uh, uh, looking over Monument Valley. Uh, but this is one of the things that is often provided uh, if you're part of a photography workshop that they will uh, provide um, the animals, the people, the models that uh, you normally wouldn't be able to find if you were out there just on your own. Um, this is Goulding's um, trading post um, and I was trying to capture how the uh, wood on that barn door at the right is sort of cut so it just goes right into the stones and um, uh, ended up capturing the kitty cat up there in the rafters, and I don't know if the kitty cat was a paid model or not, uh, <laughs> but he was certainly hanging out, and I captured his picture. Uh, Monument Valley, uh, the mittens there, left mitten and right mitten. Um, and um, again, uh, rich colors on this because it had been, uh, uh, the rain had settled the dust that was in the air, and um, also brought out some of the really rich, uh, vivid colors. And Jim's going to show you some really great Antelope Canyon uh, shots, but this was, uh, we went to both Upper Antelope and Lower Antelope Canyon. And you'll see some white specks there. Those are really not dust spots. I figured that it's like bird poop. <laughs> uh, that has come in from the top of the canyon there. Uh, so I decided not to clone it out or anything. I wanted to leave it very authentic. Mm -hmm. And another stop was at the uh, Keyhole Arch. Uh, this one was a little bit, uh, at least difficult for me to get to uh, because I uh, have trouble sort of 
uh, walking over rugged terrain and it was a bit of a, a walk uh, over uneven surfaces and climbing to get to this particular location. And this uh, Monument Valley, the Mittens again, uh, the very famous Ansel Adams rocks. And again, you see some little white specks there, but uh, those are not dust spots on the camera. Again, the birds uh, contributed to that, and I just didn't have the heart to erase it. Um, Ansel Adams, of course, his work, uh, fantastic black and white, but this is the same uh, location in the wonderful color um, in the evening uh, light. Uh, the remarkable part about this is so accessible now. Uh, my tripod is standing on a sidewalk, and right behind me is the parking lot to the View Motel, uh, which is where we stayed. So the accommodations were excellent, and uh, the views, of course, were just uh, wonderful. Uh, this being Upper Antelope, and some of the light that's bouncing around within the canyon. And again, we were there uh, sort of uh, by ourselves at a very crowded spot. Uh, but when you're part of a photography workshop, they make arrangements to where uh, you have some of these places uh, to yourself or at least for a, a fairly decent amount of time so you can get the kind of photographs that you really want to get. Uh, Canyon de Chez was on the trip as well, uh, this being taken from the rim uh, looking in. And Jim, what are, what are these called, uh, the towers? You told it's me one, to spider, spider rock. rock, spider rock. And again, from the rim looking down, and you can see how damp everything is. The fields there are very wet uh, because of the rich, uh, or the storms that had come through earlier. And again, making it... Uh, settling the dust that's in the air and also bringing out the really rich colors. Now that's just about probably, I don't know, a third of the places that we saw um, on a five-day uh, photo workshop. Uh, so it's uh, uh, ones where they can get you up at three o'clock in the morning to be someplace uh, by sunrise and you may uh, do some um, uh, critiquing work during the day and you're out shooting at sunset again. So really photography is of the essence and uh, uh, really enjoyable. I certainly learned an awful lot during uh, this particular trip. And just some things that you might want to think about uh, as you're planning a, a destination uh, workshop. These are, they're not cheap. Uh, they can be tremendously expensive, so you want to make sure that you get the biggest bang for your buck. Now, always there's going to be a professional photographer, um, and this, if there's someone who's on Google Plus that you uh, know about, you like their work, um, really check them out. Feel free to ask uh, people on Google um, Plus what they think about a particular workshop. Uh, get their opinions. Uh, you certainly want to uh, get someone who has a good attitude and will be helpful to help you improve your photography. If uh, there's someone who's a jerk on Google+, chances are they're going to be a jerk in, on a <laughs> workshop as well. So you really want to kind of take that into consideration. And, did you uh, actually just say that, Margaret? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there's uh, you want to know what how much attention you're going to get. Um, I know we have some wonderful um, uh, preeminent photographers on Google Plus that offer workshops, and they may have 200 people attending a workshop. Well, think about how much individual attention you're going to get if there's 200 guests on that particular tour. Uh, chances are they may have uh, some good uh, but lesser known photographers who are also acting as professionals and assisting you. But you do want to know what is that uh, pro to guest ratio is, is what I call it. And then you've got to find out what's included in the price. And uh, always the instruction is going to be included. But you want to check on things. The ground transportation, is that included? Are you going to have to rent a car or maybe a four-wheel drive vehicle uh, to get to some of these places? Uh, 
Is the lodging included? Uh, are any meals included? So you want to check these things out. And don't forget to check out uh, if it's a really a good match for you. Um, I'm kind of limited in the amount of walking or hiking that I can do. So I don't need to go sign up for the workshop where we're going to climb Pikes Peak in a day on foot. Uh, and take some pictures along the way. I need to stick with the group that's going to photograph it from uh, the car or uh, from the uh, ground. So see if it matches your activity level uh, and certainly your experience level. If it um, is going to be an advanced class um, and you're a beginner, that's not going to be a good match and you're not going to enjoy your trip. So those are just some slides that I wanted to uh, show you there. And let me show you now. Um, are you still seeing this? Yes. Yeah. We're still okay. seeing your slides, uh, Margaret. Oh, the slides? Yes. We're, we're back to slide one on uh, the Grand Canyon. Okay. I need to come back here and probably share this again. Now we see you. <laughs> All right. Hang on. The fun thing about Google Play, oh, there you go. Okay. Um, I had mentioned um, Arizona Highways, of course, is a magazine that's been produced for uh, decades and uh, really enhancing the beautiful sights uh, to be had in uh, Arizona. And uh, a number of years ago, they formed an auxiliary unit called Friends of Arizona Highways. It's a nonprofit. And um, they put together photography workshops. And they range from like one day to about a week uh, or longer. Uh, and it's just an incredible, uh, what I call bang for your buck. Uh, they will hire um, uh, professional photographers. They keep the uh, numbers of guests low. Generally, they take like a couple of vans out of Phoenix and they head out. Uh, uh, to some of these places that uh, you can go and take photographs. But um, this is uh, certainly one that I would highly recommend. I've taken two of their uh, tours and I've just uh, given them an A plus on both of them. And you can see that they have uh, a huge variety of uh, uh, trips that you can take. Um, here's Bryce Canyon in winter. Uh, I would love to get some of those photographs of the snow. But in each case, uh, they'll describe exactly where you're going to be each day and what kind of photographs you'll be able to take. I do like that this group, everything is included. Um, all the lodging, if you go from one national park to another, that's all included. Um, and you just have to get yourself to Phoenix, uh, and, which is where they depart from. And they're very upfront as to exactly what kind of locations you're going to be going to. And uh, you'll know if that's uh, the one uh, for you or not. But just a tremendous variety of uh, ones. One that really caught my eye. Um, Here was the Lake Powell, and uh, one because uh, Gary Ladd uh, was the uh, professional photographer on this particular workshop. And for those of you who are Grand Canyon enthusiasts, you know Gary Ladd to be one of the uh, foremost photographers of the Grand Canyon, uh, has published any number of books, and is just first rate. And to have that type of person standing next to you explaining how to capture the light coming into the canyon, uh, it's just incredible that uh, you're able to get that kind of attention from that caliber of a photographer. Uh, and that doesn't happen too often, so that's why I highly recommend this Arizona uh, Highways, Friends of Arizona Highways photo workshops. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, they're a nonprofit, so they don't have that profit motive that uh, other organizations might have, and uh, certainly is uh, well worth uh, the money. And that gives you an idea of some things perhaps to look for. Let me oh. see if I can get back now to to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, Margaret, we appreciate that um, very, very extensive um, con the sharing on the photo tours in um, Arizona. What, what a wonderful opportunity for people. I know that Ben T is one of our um, team members and uh, isn't with us tonight, but he was going to be talking about um, Hawaii. And I know over in December, we were over there and uh, we, we stayed at the, the Grand Wailea and right in the hotel they had a fantastic photographer who did a workshop and we walked away with a canvas of our favorite photo. So this is a trend that is happening everywhere um, and all we have to do is look and be aware but your uh, summary sheet Margaret was just really great on deciding whether a certain workshop is what will fit for you and again the price we're, we're working on one and um, hopefully we'll have a lot of people involved in the photographers uh, global directory um, photo tour global directory where you can find people who are just giving these photo tours so now we're going to go to um, David in Ireland and he is going to be sharing with us about doing a beach tour early in the morning to capture that sun and get those reflections so David take it away Hi, Kyle. Listen, thanks very much. Um, my, for me now, uh, photo walks and photo tours. Um, I, I've never participated really in a photo tour. Many photo walks up to now. Um, the the one for me, the trip I take out usually once a year at least. Um, I didn't get manage to get down there last summer in 2012, but I got down there in February. Um, was to the Dingle Peninsula in County Kerry, which is in the very southwest of Ireland. Um, the, the peninsula itself juts out into the Atlantic Ocean, so it has uh, the sun for the full part of the day, so you can actually get beach sunrises uh, early morning in the, in the east, uh, which the, the, Dillinga, the, the peninsula faces south itself. Uh, and then you can get the sun right the way around during the day. So on the northern side of the uh, peninsula, you get the uh, the sunset in the west over the sea as well. So it's a, it's a particularly beautiful place. Um, for me, it's a day trip of a 500-mile round trip if I go for the day. Um, and I usually end up uh, leaving the house about 3 o'clock in the morning to get down there uh, for the sunrise. Um, which would be usually I go for August in the summer, but in the winter um, I'd leave at the same time because the sunrise would be about eight o'clock in the February region. Um, the, the peninsula itself is decked in history, steeped in history. Um, it, there was a stronghold of the, the revolution, the Republican Revolution. Um, it's also uh, got 12th century beehive huts. Um, stone rings, stone statues, absolutely steeped in history. It's one place to go. The, the Ring of Kerry and the Dingle Peninsula. Um, the place I'm going to show you now, I'm just going to bring the screen up. Um, hold on. Ooh. Okay, is my screen up? Yep. Yeah? Yes. yes, we can see beautiful sun rays. Okay, this was um, this was just after about an hour after sunrise. Uh, this is a place called Anaskol, which is the the, the 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 land there jutting out is the Inch Peninsula, which juts off the bottom of the uh, the Dingle Peninsula. It goes out into the sea for about a, about a mile. It's a uh, golden sands. It's absolutely a beautiful place to go. And these sun rays were coming through as I drove up over the mountain. To, to answer school to see, to see if I could get this shot and, and luckily it was there long enough for me. So the, the sun rays are, are bursting through uh, on a very cold February morning, very windy and cold February morning, but it was absolutely beautiful. And uh, I don't think I could go down there and repeat this shot. Um, it was an absolutely stunning day to be down there, even though it was overcast in many places. This is actually down on the beach. Um, on Inch Strand, which we just seen, 
uh, oyster catchers sitting there looking for anything that's rolling in from the sea and you can see on the other side there the, the peninsula across the other side of the uh, from the dingle this next one here this is uh, the Blasket Islands in the distance absolutely amazing place to be on a, a beautiful summer's day but even on a winter's day like this was where it was overcast you can still get some spectacular views um, this cottage in particular, this abandoned cottage and shed, it's a very famous photograph. It's actually on virtually every postcard you'd see of Ireland or the Dingle Peninsula. And it's a very easy shot to get. You literally just drive down to the end of Slea Head, which is at the end of the peninsula, and as you're driving down, you won't miss this. This is the side of the road. Now, there's nowhere to park your car up and take a picture. You'll have to walk back a few yards, but it is a, it's a stunning place. It's a stunning spot to be. Now this is um, just below where those huts were. This is the end of Slea Head, at the end of the Dingula Peninsula, Dingle Peninsula, sorry. Uh, it's uh, Coolna Mule or Coolna Mule Beach. Um, on the on the right hand side there, you can just see the pathway that comes down. Uh, this is actually on a famous uh, famous beach. It was on a Volkswagen ad a good few years ago. But um, the Quiet Man was filmed down here as well, and. Um, you need the tide to be out here to get decent photographs. If the tide's in, this particular spot is inaccessible. Um, but if the tide's out, it's spectacular. It's a very big beach for um, uh, surfers as well. But you get quite a few surfers there. There's a few there in the water. You can't really see them. But there was on this particular day. And it's very overcast, which was unfortunate. Uh, there's a, an old mountain uh, sheep there uh, looking just above. He's cute. This guy? Yeah, yeah. we've just in. Hold on, this hasn't gone back. Oh, my screen's stuck. Well, this particular shot you can see on the screen. Oh, there he is. Um, oh, oh, hold on. Back we go. Yeah. Uh, this was just the field above um, the, the strand there. And then. Um, I just took a few photographs while I was gone because the, the mountain, he just stood there waiting for his picture to be taken. So. <laughs> um, this one is, uh, this is Dunquin uh, Harbour. Um, so this is also a famous sort of postcardy shot really, but there's a shot with uh, sheep walking up, a big herd of sheep coming up. They've, they've uh, been brought off a boat from the harbour down below. I think there's a good uh, 300 foot drop down on either side of this. And you can see looking out towards the Blasket Islands there in the background. Um, it, it's, a, it's a spectacular spot to be at. The, the lens I was using on the day wasn't really wide enough. You'd need a, this is only an 18 millimeter lens. You need a lens, um, a good 12 millimeter lens to get the, the perfect shot here without the, the bow distortion as well. But, and then you can level it out slightly. But it's a David, beautiful spot to be in the water. David, how far away is that from Dublin? This unfortunately is about 250 miles. Oh, it's quite away. Close. It's quite away from Dublin. It's not. It's not really an accessible place in a day. But I mean, I do it from Bray, which it's about 230, 240 miles from Bray. Um, but it is a spectacular place to be. Um, this shot now is uh, for the Connor Pass. On the right hand side, you can just see the road, which leads all the way down. To uh, down towards Tralee. Down, this is on the looking to the northern side now of uh, of the Dingle Peninsula. Uh, you can just see these two locks there, and uh, well, there's three individual locks, and you can see how overcast it was. The cloud base was just above my head. This is a, a pan I did from there, um, and it, when I got down to the other side of the the peninsula, <clears throat> surprisingly, it was quite clear. There was a bit of blue sky in, inside of the clouds. Uh, this was the, the other side. Um, this is Farron Killer Beach or Farron Killer Strand. You can see the golden sands are stretching right the way out. Uh, I'd say it was a good uh, quarter of a mile out towards the sea from the walk on the sand. <clears throat> Luckily, I got it while the tide was out. Uh, spectacular beach to be on. Absolutely spectacular beach. Uh, it, was a, it was just a beautiful day. 
And this last shot now is one I've rescued from 2004. I've had a hard drive crash two years ago, so I lost about 30,000 photographs of Ireland mm. in that time. So this is uh, this is one I took in 2004 from that same spot with the huts looking out to the blaskets. Um, this was on a family holiday. And uh, these are really happy memories of uh, camping. We usually camped in uh, Fossa in Killarney. Uh, uh, for me now, this is, that is just my memory of Ireland, really. That's how beautiful Ireland can be. And if you have the weather and the, the blue sky, it looks absolutely amazing. I could stare at that scene all day. I could just sit by them huts all day with a drink, a few sandwiches, and the family just chatting. And we, we did spend me an hour at the end of the uh, sleigh head here, looking out to the blaskets in the background. There. Absolutely amazing. And uh, I'll just take that off. How do I go back to my screen? Here? Just click on screen share, and it'll go back to you. <clears throat> I'm trying, but it's not, for some reason I'm... Uh, there you go. Yeah. We're, we're, you're back to you. <clears throat> so. Okay. And then, um, for me now, it's a, it's a bit of a trek in a day. Um, I just need to make sure that I got myself prepared a couple of days before. The usual one, make sure the car's full of petrol, make sure I've got the uh, the camera fully charged up. Just, just make sure I've got... Um, uh, my tripod, any uh, uh, drying equipment, any um, silica gel, um, any cloths, any lens cloths, uh, two lenses which I usually carry a, a large telephoto and um, a wide angle telephoto and <clears throat> just prepare myself. The only problem I have really is um, for the seaside shots, getting down into the sand, is um, waves lapping in over the tripod. Um, you tend to get a lot of sand in a tripod, uh, mm. so really having a star key and washing out my tripod is a religion every morning. Uh, and I have a silica spray gel which I spray inside, which actually helps quite well. But I, I literally have to take my tripod apart every single morning to clear the sand out in some way if I've been down to the to the beach. Um, but it, it's a round trip. It's something I do uh, once a year. But if I can get anywhere in Ireland, I will. Um, but that was my last one because last year, 2012, was very busy for me, unfortunately, um, in work and at home. But um, that is my ideal destination. Just taking a trip down to County Kerry for the day or even for a week on, on a family holiday. We're actually going this year on a family holiday. We're going to uh, Killarney for one week. Um, we're, we're not leaving. Well, we're going in March to uh, Paris, which is my next destination. Um, which we're going there for a week, uh, 21st of 21st of March. Um, it could be two weeks, but it's a week at the moment for definite. And um, we're going to Trinity in August. Oh, wow. Awesome. Well, uh, David, thank you so much. And I, I am proud to say I am hiring David in May uh, when we go to Dublin and we're going to do the North Sea and the Baltic Sea. And uh, we're stopping in Dublin first. So I'm excited to actually meet him, get down on the ground, and shoot those... Uh, <laughs> Shoot those sunrises. So that's gonna gonna be really exciting. I'm I'm excited to meet you too, Cara. And it, you know, and this is all from you know from Google Plus and and people connecting from all over the world, and that's what Google is all about. And um, mm -hmm. so this is gonna be fun. So now here we're gonna go. I'm gonna share with you uh, a little bit of another part of the world and uh, hopefully you can see this. Uh, you, you guys got the Taj Mahal up there? Yeah. You can see that. Okay. Well, every wherever you go around the world, and we um, had the privilege and honor to be able to uh, go around the world on, on a voyage, and um, one of the places that we did stop was uh, the Taj Mahal. Now, 
One of the important things that no matter where you're going, um, that you find out what the rules of engagement are before you get there. And in fact, you can go to tajmahal.gov.in, the do's and the don'ts. Now, a few of the things that we found that were um, quite interesting and so glad that we knew, you could not take any mobile phones in and they were totally banned for night viewing. No video cameras, and get this guys, no extra batteries. Okay, so, and they were, they were checking as you went, and um, they did check the entire still camera before going in in security. Um, there was no photography inside the mausoleum. You could take all the pictures you wanted outside, you were requested not to make noise. Your shoes had to be covered or removed. And this would, if you weren't aware of this and just happened to show up, they are closed on Friday. Okay? So who <laughs> you would think uh, one of the wonders of the world would not be closed, but it, it is on Friday. So so um, as you're finding, now here you go, this actually was my husband, <laughs> and you can see here the security, um, the high security everywhere, and this is interesting, we had to go through these cattle guard like areas, and the men were separated from the women. So as you went through and had your equipment checked, you had to go through your own stalls. So then, um, about the shoes. Now this is just India. This is what it looks like almost everywhere. Uh, just all kinds of transportation, all kinds of people. And this is, <laughs> the sacred cows are everywhere. And um, they're in stores, they're on streets. And they, they make it so that we need to clean our shoes. <laughs> so here we go showing uh, cleaning our shoes in the hotels because it really is hard on your uh, going in places and feeling clean. So these were the red shoes that they did give us in um, uh, at the Taj Mahal. So you didn't have to take your shoes off. You could put the little red slippers on, but you could not, absolutely could not go in with shoes or without cover. So then when you're planning, one of the things uh, that we had in our episode one and episode two, we're talking about the light and adjusting your cameras. So as you're coming, the Taj Mahal is all white. So the adjustment for the contrast was important as you were taking shots. And then if you were going backwards, this is back from the Taj Mahal to the entrance. That's the reflecting pond. And then waiting uh, here, <clears throat> just looking up and seeing the sun on the left-hand side as it was starting to set. And w if you're wanting the evening pictures or the day pictures, again, it's all about uh, checking the timing that, that you're going to be there. And um, so, so here we go. Uh, and this is one of the most, for me, every place that we go, I try and create a rule or something that really stood out. And in, at the India, at the Taj Mahal, and Taj Mahal is building of love, there are no sharp corners. There are no 90 degree angles. And in relationships, in communities, and Margaret, it's so funny you talking about whether someone was a jerk. <laughs> you know, when you have those sharp corners, you're not building with love. So this, this yeah. is one of the rules of the Taj, that you cannot have the sharp corners. And that was something fun for me. But here as the sun starts to set, that you've got that sun coming in, you're getting the blue hour, the golden hour, and we've been sharing these things with everyone on our, uh, our photo shares, on our um, photography 
photography show and so I just want to wanted to share some of the things from the Taj Mahal and just emphasize you you need to Google wherever you're going to find out if there are any rules even the national parks certain rules and regulations so that's my little share and now we're going to go to Jim Worthman and he is going to share with us some some more valuable information Jim <laughs> thanks Cara yeah uh, so I'm going to talk about Page Arizona and there's so much to do and see in Page that I'm going to focus on the Antelope Canyons which by the way have no 90 degree angles <laughs> that's true <laughs> okay, so I'm um, learning a lot here tonight about these <laughs> angles yeah, no jerks either. Oh, um, so <laughs> Antelope Canyons. You know, if you're going to plan a trip there, especially if it's a, you know quite a distance from where you live, it's always good to do research ahead of time. Um, and I'm going to start by talking briefly about a resource that I really like. I'm going to share the screen. Hopefully, did it work? Yes, we got it. Looks good. Okay, so. Um, there's a newsletter called Photograph America and published for over 24 years, I guess, by uh, Robert Hitchman. Um, it's an outstanding resource for researching a photo destination if it happens to be in the U.S. Okay? Um, and uh, you, it's available by subscription. You can get individual issues. They have regional collections. I like the PDF set. Um, and uh, this catalog is part of the set. The catalog is also available online, um, but the PDF set is searchable, so it's kind of handy to if you think you're going to go to the the Northwest and go visit Ben T or uh, wherever you can go searching through the PDF collection. Um, but I'm going to scroll down and and uh, just show you a little bit of the catalog. You can see it highlights each issue and gives a, a little summary. Um, I know that issue seven might be interesting as far as as uh, slot canyons and antelope canyons go. So um, I'm going to switch here, hopefully. Now, Ben or uh, Jim, what is the website on this? Uh, we'll, put it, we'll put it in the show notes, but it's photographamerica.com. Okay, great. And so here's issue seven. You can see it was published in 1990, but updated in 2008. And I'm just going to scroll through it. You can see um, it, it highlights a number of desert canyons uh, that, that are popular, um, Buckskin Gulch, of course. But I, I also know that I think it's page eight is where it talks about antelope. Yes. And uh, um, one thing I wanted to show you is, is this map. So um, you can see, like Margaret mentioned, there's upper antelope and lower antelope. That really has to do with the elevation. So upper antelope is higher in elevation. As you, it drains into Lake Powell, as you get closer to Lake Powell, it's lower. So hence lower antelope. Um, also, one of the things you'll find in Photograph America, he'll talk about weather. Um, when you go to antelope, um, you have to be aware that if you go in the summer, it's desert and it's hot. Uh, but maybe surprisingly, if you go in the winter, um, it, it can be windy, it can be very, very cold in the canyon. Um, when, when I stop sharing my screen, you can look again at my profile picture, and I'm really bundled up because that was, uh, the, my profile picture was shooting in Antelope in December. Um, so anyway, the weather the weather is something to pay attention to uh, anywhere, but Antelope Canyon is no exception. One other thing about the weather, um, you need to pay attention to is it likely to rain nearby mm -hmm. or anywhere in the watershed. Now, the Antelope Canyons are, are uh, on Navajo land, so there are Navajo tour guides, and, and a Navajo family operates the canyon. They try to pay attention to the weather because uh, it's prone to flash flooding, and you you know it, you don't want to be in the canyon if there's going to be a flash flood. So do pay attention to the weather. 
Um, okay, so much for Photograph America. And again, it's photographamerica.com. So I wanted to um, go briefly to uh, how do you get there. And, and so here's Google Map. And I don't know how visible it is, but uh, this shows the route from Flagstaff to Page. And it's about two and a half hours, about 140 miles. Um, and uh, I'm going to switch here to a satellite view that shows Page. And, and down on the left side, you can actually see Horseshoe Bend, which I'm not going to talk about, but maybe on another Hangout. It's, a, it's another great location. Um, but here's Page, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, Margaret mentioned on the um, Arizona Highway, Friends of Arizona Highways trip, Gary Ladd, uh, and he is just an extraordinary photographer. Now, when I go to Page, I kind of like to stay at the Days Inn on the south end of Page, which is, uh, you can see the swimming pool. Um, and it's right across the street from a Walmart Supercenter, so that can be handy. The reason I like, one of the reasons I like the Days Inn um, is because it's filled with photographs from Gary Ladd. Hmm. So as you go through the lobby, you'll see a bunch of really large prints. They're gorgeous. In all the rooms are photographs uh, that Gary has taken. Um, Mostly around Lake Powell, but not not only Lake Powell. Anyway, that's just uh, that. It's my recommendation. There are uh, a ton of hotels in Page, hotels and motels, but uh, my recommendation would be that one. So now I'm going to show you one other thing. Um, hopefully, yes. Um, to get to Antelope Canyon, you you drive down Route 98, and it's like five minutes from the hotel or from Walmart, if you will. And um, what you'll see is uh, on either side of the road is our upper and lower antelope. So uh, on the south side of the road is the parking area for upper antelope. And directly across the street and down a little dirt road is the parking area for lower antelope. So it's, it's kind of can be, you, can, you really can do both in the same day. Um, one comment about shooting, uh, you don't need, unlike David's trip, you don't need to get up at 3 a.m., uh, <laughs> especially if you're staying locally. So uh, good shooting in antelope is really midday. Um, you don't need to get there for sunrise and, or sunset. It just doesn't matter. And in fact, if you go in the summer during midday, you'll see what Margaret showed earlier, some of those nice light beams coming down into the canyon. If you aren't there just at the right time and time of year, you're not going to see those beams. So summertime and right around midday is, is the time for the, for the beams. Okay, um, now I'm going to switch, hopefully, to show some photos. And there, there we go. All right, and is that, is that visible? Yes, we see the Cantaloupe Canyon. Okay, so um, this shows, I only have a couple shots from Upper, and one of the reasons is that Upper Antelope uh, is really busy, busy, busy with people. So if you're trying to take photographs, you really have to put up with a lot of people wandering through, and, and they try to be courteous mostly, but it's, it's congested. Uh, lower Antelope, much less so. Um, so this is near the entrance. You can see that Upper Antelope um, is largely flat, although as you hike through the canyon, there are a few obstructions you have to scramble over, but, but you, you literally walk in from, from where you get out of the truck, um, and, and you're on kind of flat ground. There's a lot of sand and dust, as you can see, so you want to minimize lens changes. Um, I've changed my lens in the canyon, but it's just, you risk getting dust on the sensor. Um, another comment is, uh, when you're in the canyon, it really is quite dim, so you need to be paying attention to the dynamic range of your image, and unless you're intentionally planning to do HDR, um, you want to avoid getting the sky in your shot, and, and I even take it a step further, I try to avoid getting any rock surfaces 
that are directly lit by the sun. So up high, you'll find places where the sun's shining on the rock. And, and again, unless you do an HDR, if you include that in your shot, it's going to blow out. So my, my own style is best to avoid those. Um, okay, here's, here's my only other shot that I'm going to show you from upper. And um, one, another comment is, is um, you generally will want to stop down quite a bit to get a good depth of field. Now you may do creative things and do you know prefer a really shallow depth of field for some shots, but in general, stopping down is is the best thing in antelope. Um, and it's low light, so you're going to have long exposures, and obviously you need a tripod. Um, this particular shot was ISO 200 f11 at 13 seconds. Um, and a word about the tripod: the the more um, I'll say flexible, maybe that's a bad word. The, the more adjustments your tripod has, the better. It's great if you can swing one leg up to be nearly horizontal and, you know, be able to really uh, get a lot of, of articulation in the tripod because often in order to get this kind of shot, you'll be right up against a wall. And if, if you just use a tripod in a conventional way with all three legs pointing straight down and spread, you know, apart for stability, you're, you're not going to be able to get in a position to get some of these shots. Okay? Um, lower antelope. So, much different than upper. In upper antelope, like I said, you just walk in on that sandy surface. Lower antelope, you climb down. <laughs> and so this crack in the ground is literally the entrance to lower antelope canyon. Ooh. And as you go down, right near this entrance, there's a ladder and you... you uh, it's, it's kind of like a steep step ladder, but you climb down ladders, the further you go into Lower Antelope, the more ladders you climb down. Because again, you're getting closer to Lake Powell. Um, and uh, so that, that gives you a sense for, for what that's like. Uh, here's the only HDR I've done in Antelope Canyon. And this is, this is a um, seven exposure HDR. And uh, without, without such a wide uh, exposure range, there's no way I'd be able to capture both the sky and the detail in the rock. So in lower, uh, as well as upper, um, you want to be looking for interesting shapes. And, and you just you know, turn your head around every which way, and, and uh, you'll find a number of formations that, you know, you're not you're never or almost never going to be shooting straight and level. Your camera will often be pointed at strange angles and, like I said, with your tripod up against the wall. It's just the way it is. Um, so be alert for patterns and shapes. And again, these are all from lower antelope. I think this is one of my exceptions to the straight and level. This one really was shot straight and level. <laughs> and uh, I think that's, that's what I get. That's it. Um, so, yeah, Kara, back to you. Oh, <clears throat> those are amazing shots that you've captured there, Jim. Um, and <clears throat> I, I'm not sure if people realize that you do have to have a guide to go into those canyons. Um, it is on the Navajo land, and so you you hire a guide. And, and we did this last uh, summer with some Google Plus uh, photographers, and it was $89, and it was so amazing to be able to go in with them and they actually cleared the way so that we could have all the people and we went backwards so it, yeah. it's great to be able so to go. $89 each? $89 each, yes. Oh, okay. The normal uh, charge, you usually have to pay a normal entrance fee, which I think it's gone up a bit, but I'm thinking it's around $25 or $30 each. Um, and what I've found is if you if you claim that you've been there before and don't need somebody to point out all the interesting formations, um, especially in lower, they'll let you go in all by yourself. 
Well, and, we just we went to Upper, and uh, he he took us backwards from the crowd because, like Margaret said, there were hundreds of people. So we went way out and then worked the opposite way, which was great for the for the shots because yeah. we were going the, the opposite way of the. <laughs> of the one yeah, thing uh, when you when you go to some of these places, if you have hired guides or if the guides are part of the photo workshop package that you've paid for, uh, they will help the photographers out by uh, taking care of traffic control, crowd control, and uh, of course you can't hold those hundreds of people up forever because uh, they do get kind of antsy, but uh, uh, you know they'll give you a good 10-15 minutes alone. Uh, where you can just photograph uh, to your heart's content. So you end up with 50 photographers along one side of a wall and they're throwing sand in the air and doing all sorts of crazy things so you get these wonderful photographs while there's another 200 people that are waiting, you know, a guide is holding them up so you can get your shots. So sometimes it really does pay uh, to have that kind of assistance uh, while you're out photographing. Yep. I know our our guide. Uh, it was less than three minutes. He had everyone's um, ISO and f stop. He goes, "This is what you need," and he just was <laughs> whipping it through. Every single camera was set, <laughs> so that that was worth the eighty nine bucks for me, you know. <laughs> and they all they all turned out pretty good. So now we're coming to our section of the of the landscape photography show where we recommend a, a photographer that would be fun to connect with. So we're going to start with Margaret and Margaret's going to give us her uh, photographer to watch. Okay, let's see if I can get this uh, screen share here. Uh, do you see that one? Oh, yes, beautiful. Okay, um, this is Johan Pinenberg, and um, he is, uh, from my perspective, uh, one of the best photographers uh, anywhere in the world, let alone on Google+. Um, he does extraordinary work, and what he can do with black and white is uh, in the league of Ansel Adams and, and some very few people. Uh, uh, I totally love this type of photography. Um, this is the Matterhorn and uh, it's a long exposure and what I thought originally there on the left of that blowing snow, it's actually clouds. Uh, some that have been blocked there by the Matterhorn and some where that's, uh, the clouds are just moving over. So a beautiful long exposure and um, this is one of my favorite uh, shots, but this is Johan Pinenberg, and um, if you've been on Google Plus very long, you probably already have him circled, but if not, you simply need to do so. Uh, you will be thrilled at every uh, photograph that he produces, so uh, like I said, uh, the best, uh, I think, uh, landscape photographer in, in black and white. Um, there's just uh, um, no one that comes better at his craft than does Johan. And he's very accessible, so he's a very uh, good person to chat with on Google Plus and to get advice on photography, so he's a very approachable as well. And I think he even has, uh, uh, he keeps, he has some goats over there in Switzerland, so that's, uh, David's goat kind of reminded me of that. Uh, but uh, do check out Johan Pinenberg. Thank you, Margaret. So, David, now you're next. Who who would you suggest that we watch? Um, David Murphy. Um, he's a Dublin-based photographer. I think you can, can you see this picture of pegs on the line. Yep. Yes. Okay. This guy has a very quirky way of looking at the world. I think, and yet at the same time, it, it's it's different. Uh, He's not so much a landscape photographer, but he is a landscape photographer because he does take beautiful landscapes of Dublin, uh, cityscapes. He takes all sorts of pictures, 90% uh, of them in black and white, 99% of them say in black and white. Um, but for me now, he just has um, uh, a, a great eye for a picture. 
Um, some things you just you just don't think you're taking photographs of, and he does them in a, a different way. And I, he's actually one of the curators of the leading lines um, uh, theme on a Monday, and I just love uh, what he does. He just yeah. takes pictures of anything, but he he presents them. And, Sometimes I look at his pictures and he gets quite a lot of pluses, and I go, "Well, why is that got a plus?" But then I go look at it like, and I go, "And I can see why, because he just does. He just goes all out and, and takes deadly pictures." I, I mean, I, I would actually, uh, I'd love to meet up with a guy one day. Uh, I'll have to get in touch here on Google Plus and, and try and um, figure it out. Because uh, for me now, he has all sorts of pictures, mostly black and white. Though. But well, David Murphy, he's based in Dublin, and uh, I would give him a circle any day. Thank you, David. And oh, Jim, okay. <coughs> who's your photographer to watch? Okay, so um, my, let me do a screen share here, uh, is Joseph Hawkins. And... Um, Maybe I'm not going to do a screen share. Uh, Joseph Hawkins is based in Fresno, California. Um, is a longtime Google Pluser, and yet not that well known. So only okay. a couple hundred people, I think, have him circled. Um, he's a serious amateur. Um, variety of color and black and white landscapes, and and also some macro work. Um, nearly everything in his stream is his own original photography. Uh, and and it's really good, and I just wish I was able to <laughs> share with you uh, what I have to I'll get off the black screen. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. And with uh, to all those of you who are listening, we will have a link to all these suggested <laughs> photographers uh, as we close up. And I would like to suggest um, uh, Delcor Eric, uh, and from Belgium, and he actually is sponsoring a contest that each and every one of you who are watching should participate in. Um, and the directions will are on his page, and it's. It's just fun to kind of get out of your comfort zone and get into a contest and he's actually no branding on the pictures there will be no names so it really will be just a photograph um, and a contest and it's through uh, May March 2nd so um, you'll be able to find that on Delcor Eric's uh, about page so now we're going to end up with our tip of the evening and Margaret's going to give us that tip and I want to tell you before we end here that our um, 26th of, uh, of February, we will have David Marks talking about uh, the uh, Google Maps and um, Lightroom and how it all integrates. So we're very excited to have our guest David Marks on the 26th. So mark your calendars, uh, 7 p.m. Um, Mountain Standard Time, 8 p.m. Uh, Margaret Time, <laughs> Central Time. So here we here we go, Margaret. Tell us, give us our tip, and we'll be sh closing up our show. Okay, let's see if we can. Uh... She's going to talk about identity theft. It, it has to go with the new movie, right? <laughs> 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 Box office movie. Do you see it there? Uh, no, we don't. Okay. Now we're starting to see something. We're seeing your screen. Well, I'm having a... One of those gremlin moments. <laughs> so maybe you can just tell us about it.
while Margaret's doing that, I do have the shot that I was going to put up if you're interested. Oh, great. Go ahead. And then maybe she'll, she'll be fixed. Checking that out, wonderful. I'll, um, there we go. Oh, that's the beautiful shot. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so that's, uh, again, Joseph Hawkins, and that's an example of the kind of work that he does. Um, what, I think what's interesting is that uh, several of us chose black and white photographs tonight. Yes. So anyway, Joseph Hawkins. Okay. Well, um, I'm having trouble bringing up that slide that has the link to this, but I'll be happy to put that in our uh, notes. Okay. Uh, this is my uh, home page, my own profile, and what I want to show you is um, um, if you are ever wondering about uh, anyone who has misappropriated your photograph, uh, Google has a wonderful way of finding out. Uh, if you can see, I'm doing a right click there on a photograph, and I have actually a couple of uh, or three different ways. This is the one uh, search Google uh, with this image, and you can um, just bring that up. It'll do an analysis of that photograph. You see my little bird there. And these are all the places on the web that my little bird can be found. And um, uh, now most of these I know about, um, and I'm actually OK with them being there. They're shares of that particular post. Uh, this one I didn't know about. It's on a blog of some sort. Uh, so I did go check this one out. And now it's a matter of navigating to find uh, the photograph that's there. I know that um, the Google search told me it's somewhere here. And there's my little bird. And you can see that uh, it's a share of my uh, post there. I've been given full credit for it, so no one has misappropriated my uh, photograph mm -hmm. there. So it's very easy to check out your own photograph to see if someone has misappropriated it. Uh, here's an. I'll just do another one, and again, uh, I'll do this reverse search image. Uh, they're very much the same, and again, these are all the places uh, uh, on the web where that photograph is found, and I know about all of these. Uh, they're all ones where that particular post has been shared. Uh, this is one of my local references. Um, group I belong to, the image makers, and it's posted there as well. So it will find all those places where your photograph is found on the web. So certainly a, a very useful tool. You can simply download this. It's very easy uh, to download. And uh, when you uh, download it and it it's installs easily, uh, you get it from the Chrome uh, store on Google+. It's free, of course, and that gives you a very useful tool that you can go around and inspect your own photographs to see if anyone has misappropriated them in some way. And uh, that's also one of the tools that we use to uh, find pirated uh, photographs. Uh, in the landscape photography community, and we don't seem to have too much of that in the landscape um, photography theme, photography theme, uh, but those are some of the tools that we use to see if a photograph does indeed belong to the person who's posting it. So that's our tip of the day, a free tool that you can get to help check out uh, identity theft of your photographs. That's our tip, Cara. All right. Well, thank you, Margaret, and thank you, Pavel, for listening, and we hope that you've gotten some fun ideas on destination photography, and we'll be seeing you on February 26th as we learn about Google Maps and Lightroom from David Marks. And you have a great week, and thank you for watching.